Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be amazed. That sentence on a Gotham chess video could mean that I'm about to show you 200 ELO chess, but it also could mean that I'm about to show you 3,700 ELO chess. The games that I will show you momentarily are from the TSEC, the Top Chess Engine Championship Super Final Season 25. And they are between Stockfish and Leela Chess Zero, the two strongest chess engines in the world. Watching these two fight is a spectacle. There is really nothing quite like it. And Top Chess Engine Championship usually operates where the engines are given an opening that they play against each other with white and with black. That's called a pair. Now, Stockfish does win a lot of these matchups, but they're getting closer and closer. And in this video, I'm going to uncover the secret of how to beat Stockfish. How Leela Chess Zero manages to beat Stockfish. I'm going to show you three games. In the first game, it's one of the most unbelievable end games I've ever seen in my life. The second game is maybe the best positional game I've ever seen in my life. And the third game is Leela defending perfectly, using all of Stockfish's attacking momentum and turning it back against Stockfish. Just, that's all I have for you. I mean, just, just, just enjoy this. You know, so many people enjoy these computer chess videos that I make um, that they come up to me at like book signings. I mean, I can't tell you how many people, probably like 30 people at this point, have come up to me like while we're talking, I'm signing their book and they go, you gotta make more chess computer content, like AI, like Leela stuff. People love this stuff, so enjoy. Leela in the first game opens with pawn to d4 and black plays knight f6 and I will be telling you at which point they left theory like when they started thinking on their own and when the pre-programmed stuff disappeared c4 e6 knight f3 b6 so already a commitment white has played the standard d and c pawn opening right excuse me and black played knight f6 e6 uh, black could have played g6, but at top computer level, I mean, it's it's generally better to bring out this this bishop. And now white has an option to play knight c3, trying to play e4. And then black, of course, would play bishop b4. But this is not a human game. This is an, a computer game, so they are pre-programmed. Knight f3, and now black can play d5. Black can play the bozo Indian. Uh, that's actually called the bogo Indian, but I prefer to put a z there because I think it's funny. B6 is the Queen's Indian defense. Black will either play here or here targeting uh, that pawn. That, that, yeah, that pawn. Uh, knight C3, bishop to B7. White plays bishop G5, developing and pinning. Black plays bishop E7, developing and blocking the pin. And by the way, if you're like watching this as a beginner or early intermediate, do you notice how like every move they're getting a piece out? Like nobody, nobody's going, eh, I'm going to take the knight because I think knights are tricky. Like try to copy how these 3700 ELO things play, you know? If you're watching this as a beginner, like, if this is not what your games look like, you're doing something wrong, not these things. White plays e3, and now black has many choices here, but black plays knight to e4, a pre-programmed move, trying to solve things early in the game, breaking some principles of chess, repeating multiple moves with a piece that's already been developed, but black's trying to trade knights, and black is trying to trade bishops. Uh, Leela takes the knight, inducing the bishop to come forward, and now a standard practice here would be to get the bishop off the board Well, after you deal with this. Now, interestingly, Leela does not take. I think 9 out of 10 players under 1,500 here would just take this bishop because you just took this. And, like, why would you waste time and go backwards, right? Well, there would, you, of course, you would just lose. But no, actually, bishop f4, which is very interesting. So Leela just says, no, I actually, you know, my, my bishop is good. And in the long term, it's slightly more active than your bishop. So computers already at this point know this type of stuff, even though we are in, of course, like the book. Bishop d3 trying to trade. This trade is bad for black because black ends up having some light squared weaknesses. Uh, this trade is probably even worse for black because black has the light squared weaknesses and white has a bishop to attack with. So in the game, black plays bishop to b4 check and actually Leela plays king f1. Like, Leela, and again, we're still in, like, the book, but the point is that White's king is completely safe. White's king is totally safe. Black doesn't have enough space. Black doesn't have enough pieces and firepower in, flat, in, in, in flact. Uh, in fact, Black has to trade a bishop. Black has no pieces anymore. Like, Black has all the pieces back there that still have to develop. And now the bishop comes back again. And now Leela plays h4, which is a really interesting move. Securing control over g5. 
right? You're trying to play knight g5, create an attack because your rook is still on the h file. You also want to play g3 and king g2 maybe in the future, or maybe h5, h6, right? Advancing the pawn all the way, knocking on black's door. If the position opens, white will have a big attack. If the position stays closed, we know from these, if you've watched any computer videos in the past, you know that computers love pushing their flank pawns to restrict pawns like that in the end game. f5 is the final move, by the way. You waited long enough for me to tell you. This is the longest that, uh, that it took for a new move to come about, f5. Uh, counteracts white's queen and Leela emerges from the opening with a slight positional advantage the advantage is based on the fact that Leela has more space more pawns kind of line far up more development so how is Leela going to bring this advantage home first it plays h5 so it no longer cares about the g5 square it's just trying to advance its h pawn potentially knock on the door here like i already said maybe g4 in the future to open things up but we will see Stockfish plays d6, a solid move, but a major weakness on e6. But I gotta tell you, it was tough to develop the pieces, right? Rook e1. So bringing that rook away from the queen side, not looking to advance on the queen side, looking to potentially cut the board in half and play where all of your pieces are. Stockfish develops with queen d7, covering its weakness, and Leela plays h6. Finally, finally that h-pawn move happens. If black takes, the king is open, so black has to go here. Now this pawn is a major liability in all long-term positional play. So in the end game, what's gonna happen? Not right now, but that's that's gonna be a problem because the more pieces that black trades, it's gonna be really, really tough to, to get rid of. And after something like f4, you're never getting rid of the knight, right? So Leela now takes a moment to shred open the center of the board. Leela is really good at exploiting weaknesses and creating them. It's also really, really good when it has more space. And its long-term planning is like out of this world. It's not an aggressive computer. This plan is actually more positional than it is aggressive. Yes, against the human, it would be nice to win by checkmate, but that's not gonna happen when your opponent's 3,673, okay? E4 is designed to target the weak pawn on E6. Stockfish finally finishes the development, but Leela plays g3, rock solid. My Stockfish is already trying to get, you know, a move like d5 on the board. Brute force, tactics, that's mate, the knight is hanging. Block the bishop, take the knight, take here, open this up. Like, Stockfish wants to brute force everything, you know? It wants to emerge in a position like this. And then it wants to re-threaten mate, and then black will defend against mate, and then it wants to reroute the knight. But Leela doesn't like chaos. Leela just says, G3. Leela is like the Magnus of chess engines, or Magnus is like the Leela of humans. Just G3. You defend the bishop against any nonsense, and you play king G2. And Stockford at first is like, what a, what a stupid move. Like, oh my god, what a, what a dumb move, G3. You know, now I'm going to attack you. And Leela's like, okay. And Stockfish is like, oh, I'm going to take, I'm going to take. <laughs> the unmitigated gall of Stockfish to wander off to the edge of the board in the middle of the game and just take a pawn. Like, the house is burning down and you go to the forest to pick berries. <laughs> like, you, what, I mean, what are we even doing? So, Le by the way, Leela can cash out. It can take its pawn back. No, not yet. First place, King G2 just safeguarding its position. Stockfish now has to make its way out of the forest. Leela plays bishop d2. It doesn't take the knight yet. It makes Stockfish make another move, another move, which is weakening the, the pawns behind it. And now Leela takes, and we enter endgame territory. Rooks, knight, and bishop. And Leela is so clever, forcing this small move. Like, what could, what could be this? Why was that important? Bishop f6. Rook e1, look at this pawn controlling that square, controlling the file. Now black could play king f7 here and try to go here, but boink! And I already told you about that idea earlier. Get the knight in, get the rook to the seventh rank, the game is over. Game over. M is in the evaluation. All right, knight c6, bishop g5. Oh, what an ugly move. And look at Leela, just surgical. Trade, what? The powerful bishop for the knight? This might be one of the most gangster trades I've ever seen a computer make. And now, Leela's winning. The game is over. Why is Leela willing? W willing? Why did I say willing twice? Winning. It's winning because black has no play at all. What Leela is going to do now is play b3. All three pawns cascade and stop all of this advancement. 
The bishop sees nothing. The rook sees a knight, but the knight is well protected and it will go there and the rook will come here. And black has too many weaknesses. Concept of two weaknesses in chess in any endgame. And watch as Leela plays a masterful endgame, expanding completely. There's a rule in chess. If you want to win an endgame, you often have to trade one rook, not two, one, but sometimes two, but usually one. G5, Stockfish advancing, rook e6. Look at this suffocating pressure. And now... Whoa! Leela enters an endgame. Knight in six versus bishop in six. And keep your eye on this knight. The knight now becomes a hero as it gallops and finds open space. Black doesn't have time to win that pawn, which is a decoy, because the knight will get in here. So the king runs over to defend, but now, because you go to defend that pawn, which was really, really important, the white king gets in. And despite Leela being a pawn down in a knight versus bishop endgame, white is winning. White is winning because the bishop cannot abandon the pawn. The king cannot abandon the pawn, but white's knight is just going to go here and here and then take and then take. So now Stockfish has to start getting desperate. It starts creating tactics, but the tactics are too little too late. But Stockfish does create a runaway pawn. But Leela's knight zips back and stops it one square away from promotion. And now Stockfish can't stop these two pawns. It tries, but it can't. The knight plays defense. And look at the pawns created. The king stops both pawns. He's in the square. And black can't stop three connected pawns that are going to happen. And Leela advances on both sides of the board. And what a game. What a game. And I think, I don't remember if this one went until checkmate. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. No, this one ended like a few moves before checkmate. But th this, was un this was sensational. Like, to just have the foresight that like, yeah, I'm going to win because I'm going to put my knight there and put my king on that square and I'm just winning. Like, black just runs out of moves. Just otherworldly level play. J just sensational. And all of this happened because a long time ago, you marched the pawn up to h6 and created a weakness on h7. It's, it's so impressive. So, so, so impressive. Um, this might be one of the best positional games I've ever seen in my life. Like that one, this was an end game grind, right? It, it was really, really impressive. You know, the way, the way it punished some of Stockfish's uh, arrogance. Yeah, well, this one was a Scandinavian defense. Okay. So they played the Scandinavian against each other. And this one left theory on the sixth move so so now the computers are completely on their own like which is really really fun because in the last game okay they had to play like 12 moves of theory blah 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 this is brand new and it gets tactical quickly stockfish tries to solve things with knight what what knight takes d4 well the idea is knight takes d4 queen c5 fork now a human here would play queen e2 defending that Lose this and go here. Huge lead in development. Rooks down the center line. Position looks good. But at a high depth, at a high depth, uh, black is completely fine. Like, look look at Stockfish. It claims that it's equal. So instead of that, Leela, in this position, sacrifices its bishop to ruin black's castling chances. And it just retreats and just plays normal chess. Which is crazy. Like, why would it do that? Well, it leaves black with an isolated pawn. I would never do this, though, because you're giving black quick development. But watch as Leela just plays centralized chess. It waits to castle. It forces the black king back with a check. And now it castles. And now watch as Leela structures its entire position perfectly against black's weaknesses. When you play against an isolated pawn, you want to cover its advancement completely. Also, white doesn't have a light squared bishop. So white needs to cover the light squares. Now, it would be silly to just push every pawn to a light square. But watch. Black's bishop has to guard two pawns. Watch as white applies pressure. Knight goes to e4 blocking. Takes, not knight takes. Not knight takes, but queen takes. Inviting Stockfish to suffer forever. Because if something like bishop f5, this endgame is winning for white. White just is too fast against these pawns. Rook d8 I can just take. So instead of that, Stockfish goes bishop d7. Now watch this. Knight d5. Now watch this. Bishop b. Oh my goodness. What a smart move. Bishop to b4. Removing the other piece that black has that's good. 
And then when you trade, you're gonna have pressure against those pawns. Now watch, rook f4, what a tactic. If you take, you lose your queen. Queen e2, what's the idea? If the bishop takes the bishop, Knight takes f4. If e takes f4, it looks completely fine. But rook d7, queen d7, and now queen c4 check, winning the bishop. And Leela, despite not being up any material, has an advantage in this endgame forever due to its activity and due to Black having an overextended pawn and a very weak king. By the time Black figures out how to defend himself, he's going to lose the entire house. So instead of that, rook f7, take uh, first f3, rook d2, slowly building up, and now we trade. And look at, look at white's pawns. White is about to start the maximum improvement phase. Watch, doubling the rooks, powerful knight in the center. But that knight is ready to perish because that's the weakness. Black has these two pawns floating in the center of the board, which Leela is going to point all of its focus on. Queen a4, drops the knight back, h3. Another pawn removed from danger on a light square. That is white's major weakness, but it is well protected. King b1, b3, all pawns on light squares, completely counteracting black's bishop. King b2 forward, defending the knight. The knight goes to d5, and now we have a rook and queen middle to end game where white will just methodically, slowly improve the pawns, trade a queen, strip away the defense, and break through. Watch. a4, stopping b5. A couple of moves later. What a trick! Attacking the queen because the rook would hang, and then repositioning to this square with f4 ideas and rook d5 ideas. Black goes here, white plays c3, white plays rook d5, queen d2 repositioning with more pressure. It's just a little bit of a waiting game, c4 restricting the black position. A couple of moves later, rook d5 and a5, taking away all of black's space. Slowly, slowly, queen e7, king b2, queen f6, b4. It's just a matter of time now, the king goes here. And now, a, a moment, do I go forward or do I walk my king? The idea of king c2 was potentially to bring the king over there. So for example, king g8, there, there could be an idea to play king d1. Let's say king f8, king e1, king g8, king f1, king f8. Like there could be an idea to put the king right there and then go in. Or then go in like this. Or go in like this, because black can't do anything. But Leela knows Stockfish's tendencies, and Stockfish plays b5. Stockfish cannot control itself. It needs to solve things right now. And that move is a massive commitment because both pawns are now liabilities. There is en passant, but there is also c5. So with the king here, you wave the red flag in front of the bull, and the bull comes to you, and now you've advanced, and now the king zips behind its pieces. A, a little king walk in the middle of this game with tremendous pressure on the black position, building dc5, bc5. Leela has a pawn that snuck through, and now we're going to a queen or a rook endgame. Slowly, we're gonna get there. The king goes back. The king goes back. Leela restricts Stockfish completely, creating threats, repositioning pieces. I'm ready for an endgame if you are. I'm ready for an endgame if you are. We have a staring contest. Here we go, rook endgame. Here comes the king. Look at that. King d3, all of this zipping. If the king gets to e4, it's over because it's a dominant position. And white has two powerful pawns. Rook d3, rook d6, all this type of stuff is there. Uh, but instead of that, you know, Stockfish again, brute forcing it. Trying to solve it tactically, giving away a pawn to play rook e8 back and try to just advance its f pawn to create counterplay. Leela too good though, just too good, too methodical. Rook g5 check, rook f5. And uh, pawns are falling one by one. The advantage is getting bigger and bigger. Of course, Stockfish still here would create massive headaches for a human being, but Leela has three pass pawns and you're just not gonna stop them. Rook h2, trying to trade the rooks. Notice how Stockfish is refusing a rook exchange, but slowly runs out of oxygen. And uh, you can't take the rook because you're pinned, but it's just a matter of time. The king goes to the corner. <laughs> a lot of people here would panic. A lot of people here would panic. Leela has a sense of humor. This is not mate because of this. Hiding the king in the corner. E7, queen c6. And uh, we're gonna be making another queen. 
King F2, and I think this game went, uh, yeah. It ends with a triple ladder mate. It's amazing to watch computers like Stockfish reduce to this absolute nothingness. Like, it's incredible. Uh, and all of that was from an opening where Leela gave up a bishop for a knight, played against an isolated pawn, traded pieces off so accurately, and then built up on the d-file and then put all of its pawns on light squares, just completely negating black's position. Just such a, what an awesome game. Just an awesome game. Uh, and the last game that I have for you is perfectly using Stockfish against Stockfish itself. Stockfish is a bully with white, with black, and especially if you give it the right type of opening, it is a massive bully. And this is a King's Indian defense. It is a King's Indian defense by black, which is a bit obscure. C5 chosen, white tr trying to play like a Fianchetto setup. And I got news for you. Um, the new position, uh, the new move in this game is like here. Like after, th this is the last move that they were programmed with. So it's going to be a very locked position, as you can see. Black is going to play here, white might play here, but will probably advance there, and it's a King's Indian defense, so black is going to move the knight and play a 5-4. Five, five, That's what black is going to try to do. So, Leela has to use all the forward momentum that Stockfish is going to bring, you know, against Stockfish. J this was unbelievable. <laughs> Bishop to f3. What? What? No human on the planet plays this move. That is an insane move. We as humans are like 92. 90. Bishop f3 is crazy. That is a crazy move to play. I, I, I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe... Uh, I, I just... I, I don't know. You know the idea? G4. The idea is to, is to strike first. Look at Stockfish creating insane counterplay on the other side of the board already. 98. Leela says, yo, Stockfish, if you're going to give me a pawn, I'm going to take it. Stockfish is trying to open up the queen side. So if Leela takes this pawn, yes, Leela emerges a pawn up if you count all the pawns, but now black is going to have what's called Banco-style counterplay. Uh, that's because there's an opening called the Banco Gambit, where black loses B and A pawns for a C pawn, and avalanches down this side of the board. However, Leela says, no, take your pawn back. I'm gonna keep the A file closed. Very instructive, by the way. Like, I'm up a pawn, but you can have it back, because I don't want you to open up the position. Queen takes B6. Leela plays H4. It hasn't developed a single piece, and yet, it's still trying to attack black. It's trying to use everything black wants in the King's Indian against black. Plays h5. Look at this. Look at Stockfish putting its horse in the middle of the board supported by everybody. That looks so unpleasant for white. I would be so scared of that knight. And you know what Leela does? It offers a trade, which is not going to be accepted. But the idea was not to get rid of the knight. Because then black goes here, gets a pass pawn, opens up the c5 square for the knight, opens up the c... No. The idea was knight f3, a5. And now, remember the game that it just played? King f1. It just plays king f1. King f1? Just king g2? What are you going to do to me? And it's claiming I'm better. It's just claiming, like, you have a nice knight. Yeah. And? Like, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this pawn? What are you going to do with this? Where's your attack? I have an attack. It might be over here. Now, Leela's not rushing. Leela's not rushing to take because, actually, both of these captures look good to me. But believe it or not, there is no attack. For example, if you play queen g1 looking for mate, I'm going to go here, and there is no mate. Like, I, rest assured, the king is completely safe. So what is going to happen here? Knight a6, king g2, queen b7. Look at that. Rook h3. Okay. And... C4, okay. Now I'm gonna go here, trying to get your knight out of the center. But look at Stockfish bringing its other knight. Oh, that looks so unpleasant. Knight D2 trying to win the pawn on C4 that Stockfish just put there. Now Stockfish lashes out with its final remaining pawn. Oh my goodness. We take en passant, but the F file has been opened. This knight is a beast. Just like two games ago, Leela pushes that pawn forward, knowing it's gonna have something in the end game. The bishop goes this way. Now what is... Rook H2, what are we even doing? Rook H2 just looks like a panic move. It looks like, I don't know what to do. I'm panicking. I don't... Knight C4 is not taken yet because of this. So Rook H2, Rook B8. 
Oh my goodness, it's like, it's like white is just desperately shuffling their pieces because they don't know what to do. Queen f7, f3. But then when you pause for a second, you go, wait, black has all of these incredible pieces, but Leela has a brick wall of defense. Everything's protected. Every important square is protected. In fact, this bishop is an offensive weapon. And black spent all this time and energy opening the queen side, putting all these pieces, but you built a really fancy house, and then you ran out of budget to do the sides of the house, so there's water getting in. What's happening over here? Like, once white defends their position, they're not going to play defense anymore. It's like when the, it's like when the attacked side in, in a sport makes, starts making a comeback, right? All of a sudden, this pawn is protected one, two, three, four, and five times. So you know what Leela does? It just takes the weak pawn on c4, and it says, I'm up a pawn. Not only am I up a pawn, I'm gonna take this. Stockfish now says, nope, not so fast. Rook b4, a4. I'm still Stockfish. I'm still pressuring you. Leela says, okay, b3. Okay, you have four different things that see that. You, I'm playing to your strengths. Please, prove your point. Prove your point. Show me what you got. Well, if you take, then I'm going to trade with you. Knight takes b3. A takes b3. I'm going to remove your pieces one by one. And then I'm going to go over to that side of the board. I mean, it still looks like something should get to this king. But there's not enough time. Queen f8. Take, take. And Leela's defending. Queen b1. Oh my goodness, Leela's actually attacking. And now we start trading. The, the Black Knight is still super powerful on d4, but Leela doesn't care. It just absolutely doesn't care. And here comes the other rook. And the queen is centralized. And the rook is still playing defense, which is very, very important. Queen d2, bishop g5, look at those bishops. The queen rotates, b5, because every square that that pawn moves forward, it's gonna be a problem for black to defend. The queen has to slide back. Suddenly, Stockfish is the one defending itself. Rook c7, rook f7, shuffling. It's starting to sacrifice its own pieces just to get rid of some of these annoying Leela pieces, Leela's like, I'm good. I don't want it. Oh, you want? I'll, gi I'll give you this bishop. This bishop you can have. Why? Because I need the bishop on g5. The pawn keeps going forward. Why can't it be taken? Why can't the pawn be taken? Because then rook b1 and I'm getting to the back rank and your king is restricted because that pawn I put on h6. Everything that Leela does makes sense. It's unbelievable stuff. b6 can't be taken. Now, Leela has five pawns. Not all of them can move, but it has five pawns, queen, two rooks, and bishop. You know what Leela moves in this position? King to g3. You know why Leela went king to g3? Because in this position, the winning move for white is to strike back where you have been weakest, the longest. It's like an anime. It's like a movie. Not there, but f4. There is no knight check, no rook check, and the queen can't get in because the king is actually playing the defense. F4 is game over because you would start trading everything and you would win. And if they don't take you after F4, then you just take them and you open up everything. King G3 trying to play. That is so gangster. And Stockfish sacrifices its other rook. <laughs> take, take. And if Leela takes on f4, then I get in and oh my, whoa, we're swimming with the piranhas now. I don't like that very much. Knight takes f3 check and get, oh my goodness, we got to start trying to get over there. Instead of that, instead of all that, I just go back to g2. And now I threaten check and I take your queen. Stockfish got nothing left. Rook h1 covering everything. If queen g5 check, king f1, it looks like I'm there. But I got really bad news for you. A move away from getting mated. I take, and you take, and this is made due to this pawn, that, that same pawn that you keep seeing. Crazy. Queen d8, and my friends, I think you know what's going to happen. That b pawn causing all sorts of problems. Queen a8. We go all the way down. Queens and rooks, and Leela wins again. Ama I mean, when I saw this game, I was blown away because... It just looks like Black is calling all the shots from start to finish. Like the knight coming from D8 to see the, the planting itself on D4. So many people here would lose with white. So many people because 
this is like vintage King's Indian stuff. And Leela just sets up an impregnable fortress. It defends itself perfectly and just plays like h6 and f3. And that's it. There is nothing black can do. The major question could be if Stockfish should have played c4, but then I don't know what else it could have done. I don't know what else it could have done to improve the position. Maybe a4, but it has to go c4 at some point. I don't know. And I thought this was super cool. Using all of Stockfish's strongest elements against it and then winning a game like this. Unbelievable positional game, that second one I showed you. That first game, that end game foresight. Knight Bishop, despite being a pawn down, activating both on both sides, galloping back to stop the pawn. Just incredible stuff. Now, Stockfish is overall still the stronger engine. But watching it lose to like Leela, it, it, it's otherworldly. I watch these games and I'm like, Maybe there's something I can learn. And then I go play and I hang my rook or something. So as you all know, it's a common chess condition where you get inspired by something you watch and then you completely cannot replicate it. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you want some more. Uh, and um, if you're watching this in December of 2023, I'll see you in Toronto in five days. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Uh, that's all. Get out of here.